Okay, we're going live 30 sec in 30 seconds. Marilyn's um, new agenda system, it went to her junk email. Oh no. Yeah, from the city, which is very weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got it from Ailey. Hmm. Okay, okay. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being with us here this evening. My name is Mally Rosado, President of the Court of Common Council. Uh, tonight uh, is our public comment section that I'm calling to order of Monday, uh, September 13th, 2021. And I am just going to introduce my council colleagues as I see them on the screen, Councilman John Gale, Councilwoman Shirley Surgeon, Councilwoman Marilyn Rossetti, uh, Councilman and Councilman Joe Hello? Sanchez. Hi, and for some uh, housekeeping rules, public comment shall be conducted in accordance with the following procedures. Each person wishing to address the council or committee, therefore shall upon recognition by the presiding officer, give his or her name address, and if he or she represents a group, shall in addition state for the record the name and address of said group or organization and shall limit his or her remarks to three minutes. Our remarks shall be addressed to the council as a body and not to any individual member. Any person making personal impertinence or slanderous remarks or who becomes boisterous while addressing the council shall be forthwith bear by the presiding officer from further audience at said meeting, unless permission to remain is granted by a two thirds votes of the council member present and voting. During public comment, there shall be no debate by council, although questions may be asked by council of persons making such presentation. For members of the community, please be advised that this meeting is being broadcasted and recorded by Hartford Public Access Television and can be viewed uh, via the Hartford Public Access TV Facebook page, Comcast Xfinity Channel 96, www.hpatv.org or Channel 6032 for Frontier customers. Spanish interpretation is provided through a partnership with the City of Hartford and the Hartford Public Library. Additional accommodations can be made available when enough notice uh, to the Office of Council President is made. Uh, and for uh, the record, we do have our uh, Spanish interpreter uh, here with us this evening. And I am going to go to the list of speakers for this evening. And first to speak is Kathy Flaherty. Good evening, members of the council. I appreciate you taking the time to hear from me. My name is Kathy Flaherty. I live at 139 Cedar Ridge Road in Newington, Connecticut, and I am the executive director of Connecticut Legal Rights Project, and we are located on the grounds of Connecticut Valley Hospital, uh, PO Box 351 Silver Street in Middletown. You clearly didn't hear me say Hartford for either one of those things. That's because I neither live nor work in Hartford, but I am a legal aid lawyer of 20 plus years, and I represent and have represented many tenants who live in Hartford. Um, I'm here to speak in support of the resolution that's been proposed by counselors Bermudez and Mictum uh, for relating to landlords and Unite CT. Um, I, do, <coughs> I did submit written testimony that you should all have a copy of, um, so I'll keep my remarks this evening very short. Um, I urge you to adopt the resolution. Um, I do think, unfortunately, as much as we've heard landlords complaining about losing money during the pandemic because their tenants lost jobs and lost money and couldn't pay, um, now that we finally have a program that's operational where rules have changed and the intake process has changed to make it easier for people to access and money is moving through, we need to have both carrots and sticks. 
Uh, the governor's executive order is a fairly substantial stick. I think this is a little tiny stick that may prod some landlords who otherwise wouldn't participate to participate. It is a lawful source of income. I think tenants should be allowed to take it and landlords should not be allowed to refuse it. So I urge you to uh, support that resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mark Anderson. And for the record, I just want to say that our majority leader, Councilman TJ Clark, has joined our uh, public comment section. Yeah. Yes, hi. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Mark Anderson. I live at 120 Westbourne Parkway, Hartford, Connecticut. Um, a little bit nervous, but um, so. Um, I have a property at 817 Albany Avenue that I would like to speak about. I did receive a facade for the property. Um, it didn't go um, so well and I'm left with a lot of issues. Um, the workmanship was very poor. Um, I've been at the city. I reach out to Marilyn Reese, um, numerous uh, letters, certified letter phone calls. Um, at this stage right now, um, the roof is leaking on the addition that just got done. Um, I end up going to the city. I reach out to John Collins. Um, he actually met me at the property. I showed him the work that was done and he pointed out um, flaws in the work that was done, told me that he would reach out to the building inspector that actually did the inspection at the location. Um, Nothing ever got done. So I, I met him, uh, I met along with John Robinson. I'm, I'm sorry, um, John and, um, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the other person name, but he told me basically that as long as the work's been done, it doesn't matter if it's poor work or not, it's done and it passed code. So basically I get what I get, um, you know, so um, I don't have much, outlet, I reach out to everybody um, that I can possibly think. Um, I went to the mayor's office several times. Um, anybody that's listed on the minutes, um, I reach out to them with no avail at all. Um, you know, it's, it's just so easy for everybody to say, well, this is a legal matter and um, just, just pass me on and, and just be like, well, you know, it is what it is. I, I don't believe that to be the case. Um, you know, it's a lot of money spent on this particular property and um, it's a beautiful property on the outside, but um, the issues inside is extensive. Um, the contractor um, had people broke into my property, stole my property. Um, you know, the, the workmanship is, is very poor and, um, you know, I, I have no avenue to um, get any relief. You know, this has been going on for a year or two now. Um, I mean, debt with taxes due to the, the fact that when I got this facade, it was supposed to be um, completed in 2018. It didn't get finished until 2020. Um, in that meantime, I was unable to uh, rent the property out or get a partial CO. So right now, um, I have a tax debt of $50,000. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, I've had this property for seven years and um due to the fact that it was historic, it, you know, it's numerous issues that I, I got past. I love this building. I spent my whole life saving in this building just to have a building right now that is riddled with, with issues that, um, you know, so much money been generated. And, um, you know, I have no outlets, nobody that I can reach out to. So I, I greatly appreciate the opportunity. I'm not sure um, if I can get any relief or, um, you know, anything, uh, direction that I can go in beside, uh, get an attorney because, uh, most attorney do not want to actually take this case because it involved litigation and they said it's, it's a lot of moving parts. So, um, you know, I'm hoping, uh, that some sort of relief, um, you know, would be possible, you know, um, 
you know, it's, it's I, I understand uh, your concerns, Mr. Anderson. I will have my office reach out and we can have a, a side conversation uh, about uh, what you're going through, okay? I, great. I'm very sorry you're going through that, but I will have my office reach out and have a conversation with you offline. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, just want to um, state for the record that Councilman Josh Mixtum has joined us, uh, Councilman Nick LeBron and Councilwoman uh, Will the least Bermudas. So the next person to speak is Ms. Sylvia Reed. Okay, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. How are you today? Good, and you? Excellent. Okay, the reason why I'm calling, um, hold on. The reason why I am reaching out to this committee is I represent a nonprofit organization called Gateway to Life. We are a, a nonprofit 501c3 organization that has been in existence since 2004 in the city of Hartford. And um, we educate, promote, and empower mostly now we've kind of changed our direction to focus on men and domestic violence. Um, we've had conferences at different locations, mostly at um, Parker Memorial Center uh, over the years. And, and some of the local churches, we've had our conferences on domestic violence. The reason why I'm coming to you today is because we have identified some city properties that we are interested in um, obtaining through either grants or other funding. And I just need to know if 488 Farmington Avenue, which was the, the home of Brazos and uh, 1115 Sherman Street is still available because I did notice that there was a, um, a, a, pr a program that went out that's had asked contractors to make a suggestion of what they want, what they wanted, or what they could do with that pro, um, that building or that that project. Um, I didn't know if that it was still on the agenda. The second property, if that one is not available, is fifteen forty Main Street, which is on the other side of Sands, um, on the back side of Sands uh, um, project, which is uh, if you go up. Um, Windsor Street. So, and that is a very blighted property. Both of those are kind of blighted. And that's why we want to focus on that because what we do is we've been working even with Wheeler Clinic and some of the local um, shelters to hire some of those guys who need work because we, we are, we have contractors who work with me to train and so part of our program and part of our vision is to help people who are coming out of some programs, especially men who may have battering issues. Um, what we do is we, um, we've, we've gone through the um, CDBG application. We asked for $110,000. We're still asked for 120,000, well, actually 150,000 to go along with other grant money. And so what we do uh, is offer, and our goal is to work with the courts as an attorney, the courts, the police department, the fire departments, and other agencies to receive people who are displaced because of domestic violence. And generally the police have no place to send these people. And domestic violence obviously is on the rise. And there are a lot of people who have no place to go once they say, well, you can't stay here. And then they end up going back because they have no place else to go. So we want to be that place that receives these um, emergency people who need some place to go because they need to get away from a domestic violence situation, either the batterer or the battered. Um, we, provide, pro we provide spiritual counseling to figure out why they batter in the first place or why they accept battering. Um, we also help them to make the next step good decisions as to what they should do next. 
it's also if it's a loving if it's a loving or cheating problem then we will refer them to the correct program if it's a financial issue then they can stay with us and we would help them with the financial uh, issues like saving and spending goals bank accounts job training what do they need to do next in order to better their situation if it's a drug addiction problem then we would refer them to a a drug addiction program because we don't offer drug addiction issues, problems, you know, solving. We don't do that. And we want to be a way station to help eliminate domestic violence in our community. So we have started what we call How to Tie a Tie. And How to Tie a Tie is a young men's employment mentoring program where we connect young men with seasoned professionals where they can learn how to tie a tie, meaning how they can learn to do what these professionals do, such as um, construction workers, such as insurance brokers, anything in the community to get their minds set on how they can uh, uh, enhance their futures. So what we're looking for from the city is some assistance, a memorandum of understanding, a memorandum of support as we apply for these grants and as we apply to um, either secure those properties and to work with you. You know, you can just direct us and say, well, 488 Farmington Avenue has already is off the table because we already have somebody working on that project. Or 1540 Main Street, as you know, is a very uh, homeless people are living in it right now um so i i understand and i applaud you for what you are what you are doing i will have my office reach out to you uh tomorrow um via email to see what kind of resources the city has or to put you in touch with someone but i have to be very mindful of our other speakers uh, okay the public comment section that's three minutes yes uh, thank you very again, much. thank you for everything that you're doing and i will have my office reach out to you tomorrow okay Uh, next to speak is Dr. Larry Deutsch. Councilman Deutsch, you have the floor. Councilman Deutsch? Yes, hello. Can you have the floor. Good to see everyone on the screen once again. And I'm, I'm heard as well as seen, is that correct? Uh, no, we can't see you, your video's not on. Oh, I don't know why, I'm not fast enough. I would like just to say a few words about the city maintaining a potential resource uh, for trade and for healthcare. And I mean by that, the uh, I think Brainerd Field is is um, underutilized and never has been well utilized, especially in terms of uh, flights to the Caribbean, which we talked about over recent years, where modern aircraft can easily take uh, patients, let's say evacuations from storms in, uh, uh, in the Caribbean or uh, earthquakes in Haiti and so on. And it could serve a medical function, which you know, you know I think is my interest uh, in terms of healthcare, and noting that Brainerd is unique because it's just about in the shadow of Hartford Hospital and St. Francis Hospital, and it can afford a, a sort of a taxi service much better than uh, way up in Bradley or in Tweed or something, because we are, after all, in the, cap in the capital. Oh, I didn't introduce myself. It's Dr. Larry Deutsch, a pediatrician, and recently on city council uh, in the past. Uh, so I speak, uh, speaking about the... Um, the capital city of Connecticut as a resource that we have. Councilman Deutsch, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could you just give us your address for the record, please? I'm say it again. Could you please give us your address for the record? Between the city of Hartford and the city of Bronx, New York, uh, back and forth. Uh, so in this case, uh, speaking of a unique function that I think this, this uh, relatively small airport, uh, uh, it would be regretful if the city abolished it rather than brought it to its full potential. And as President Biden says, to build back better, 
and instead of letting it languish and, and be taken over by a, a kind of development that still can be done elsewhere in the city, including Dono and uh, uh, further west in the city. But in terms, again, of health, uh, I, I would like to also caution that in the past, it's been quite uh, polluted, as everyone knows, both in the ground and in the air. And so uh, whether we can over the, overcome that uh, remains to be seen, and uh, probably it can be studied through resources in, the, in our health committee and also other reports that have been done in the past. The ground is polluted, the air is often smelly, and in, can, in addition, it's in a floodplain. And so we need to make absolutely certain that the levees are in great condition, which they are not now, that will require quite an investment, otherwise it's a floodplain. And the insurance, of course, costs more when there's any risk of flooding. So for those several reasons, I think it would be a shame to uh, not have the potential for trade with the Caribbean medical uh, issues, and instead to, uh, to, to um, make a development which may or may not really happen and uh, along the riverfront. This is, this is an important function. On the other hand, we have right within our grasp a functioning air for, uh, airfield. And with modern technology, the issues of pollution from planes are, of course, reduced. And the range is good enough to meet needs in trade with uh, the Caribbean countries of Haiti, Jamaica, uh, uh, Cuba, and Puerto Rico, of course. So. I, I would hate to see that resource, since it's already built, it already exists, even though it may not have been well managed and we still have not gotten the right uh, reimbursement from pilot from the state. The, the payment in lieu of taxes should certainly be improved, as well as the income from the airport to the city. Everyone knows about that. And there are good ways, or let's say there are potential ways to improve all that with a functioning and modern technology, not only for medicine, but aircraft, but for commerce, for trade. So I, I, I would um, uh, just urge the council not to pursue elimination of that airport function, which really this is as the capital city, um, one can say is a benefit much more than the other little airports around the state and in Bradley, which really may be overtaxed uh, overtaxed in a sense, I mean, overused and congested. So uh, I just want to present that. Of course, there are always other things to talk about, but I, I would again think about Biden's, uh, our president's uh, uh, issue about Build Back Better. And in this case, we could do that. And after there's proper investigation of all the health risks from uh, ground and air pollution, and maybe the health committee uh, would be interested, as I've just discussed with its chairman, to uh, uh, look into that very carefully. And other people have been in that area, of course. Uh, Councilman Rossetti uh, used to work there, as I recall. And so we all know the risks, but I hope the potential benefit of maintaining that uh, utility as an asset for our city. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Deutsch. Next to speak is Ms. Hyacin Yanni. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Okay, hi, I'm Haya Cynthiani, living in the south end of Hartford. How is everyone this evening? I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm calling because I have some issue recently. I think maybe the council has support opening up the gas station 24 hours, um, which is affecting our quality of life issues. And we had um, Charles Matthews came to our last meeting and the uh, issues in the meeting were why were they guess, where, why were those gas stations reopened 24 hours? So apparently uh, the city council doesn't have a good um, ordinance in place that can you know surpass the fact that these gas stations are willing to sue the city. So he, he said there was going to be um, you know, a rewrite of the ordinance for, for gas station. So I'm here to say we as a resident of the city are asking you to seriously look at that resolution and make it right. And I think especially the gas station that's within 
our residential area. That is what affecting our quality of life issues. When those gas stations are closed at 1130, things are much better in the neighborhood. Um, uh, we have maybe restaurants that are closing at two. Um, those are spillover that goes into these, rest, these um, gas stations. So we're asking you, please try to work hard to get a, a right resolution or ordinance in place for the next time we have a renewal of these gas station license. So I'm hoping that you guys can start working on that now. So we will have something in place that when we say you're closed at 1130, we mean closed at 1130. And I'm not talking about the gas station near to the highway, on the highway. I'm not um, worried about that because they're not in a residential area. I'm more concerned about, you know, with all what's going on with the police uh, reports and stuff like that, that shows how calm things are when these gas stations are not open. And to see that gas stations are open 24, it really makes us as residents feel like who cares about us, whether we are comfortable sleeping at night or not. So I'm hoping you guys can look at that seriously and address it as soon as possible. And so I'm also asking for you all to support um, you know, more enforcement for zoning um, you know, by staffing and making sure that they have enough staff to do their work. I mean, we will never change if we don't put the right people in place to do the job that we expect them to do. Now that we have the community court is open, we have a very great judge. And as a matter of fact, he was at our meeting on Thursday. I'm very hopeful that we're going to get a lot of stuff done now. So with the quality of life around the prostitutions and you know um, the panhandlers or just the quality of life issues, we're hoping that's going to get um, you know rectified now with with the new judge in court. So I, I encourage you all to um, you know meet him and see um, you know what he can do for us as a community to make our community better. And then the last thing is I like um, to you know to have you guys support that resolution for my son. Um, his um, memorial will be on the 6th of November. I'm hoping that the mayor, his group can meet to get this thing moving. Um, and, you know, it, it is five years and I'm hoping that we can do something to rest this. Okay, so please support that uh, resolution for my son. I'm not sure why, why it's back there, but I'm hoping you guys can move it along. And I appreciate it. All right, so you all take care and we will talk later. Thank you, Ms. Yanni. Um, our next um, person to speak is uh, Pamela Healer. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for having me um, this evening. My name is Pamela Heller and I'm a staff attorney at the Connecticut Fair Housing Center. I'm here to speak on behalf of a resolution that concerns the State Rental Assistance Program, which is known as Unite CT. Um, I work on behalf of lower income tenants. Um, our office is located at 60 Papalusco Court in Hartford. Um, I'm a resident of West Hartford. Um, but uh, many of my clients live in Hartford and um, it, it has come to my attention and to many advocates across the state that while some landlords are eager to accept back rent and get paid, not all of them are. And the reasons behind it seem arbitrary and um, frankly, you know, contribute to an ongoing public health crisis. So while the state law already give, offer some protection to tenants and the eviction rules are also helping ensure that landlords participate in the program. Um, we think that a resolution from the city um, would go a long way toward you know, addressing issues at a more local level um, so that landlords get the message that this is a program that's important and that um, they would you know, it would behoove them to accept the money rather than, um, you know, evict people in the middle of a health crisis. Um, the reason that I, I'm here tonight is on behalf of one of my clients who is a Hartford resident. 
Uh, she is a per diem healthcare worker. Uh, she's a single mother of one child. Um, and she has spent the last six months trying to catch up on her rent. She is in essence an ideal tenant and she's exactly the type of person who this was intended to assist. She lost her income um, because of her needing to stay home with her child when the pandemic began, um, but she has done everything to catch back up. Um, as of a few weeks ago, she owed less than $2,000. Um, and her landlord, who is one of the largest in the state, largest in Hartford, and who has benefited significantly from state, local, and federal dollars, told her that they don't want to participate. They just, no, they would rather evict her. Um, and so we intervened and, you know, my office was able to, through extensive advocacy, including at the eviction court, as well as at the Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities, we were able to have um, an agreement with the landlord that they would participate. However, we know that this is the tip of the iceberg. The folks who come to us are just a small percentage of the people who are impacted by um, this situation. So we would urge the, the council to pass this resolution um, and I'm happy to take questions either tonight or at any time my email address is available um, through a, a, a letter that we sent um, as well as my colleagues. So if there's anything that we can address, I'm happy to do so. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else that is on the screen that wishes to address this body this evening through our public comment section. Is there anyone else that is on our line that wishes to address this council body this evening? Okay, there'd be a nun. I just wanted to make sure we had six uh, members uh, speak tonight. There's no one else on our line. I just confirmed that. Um, everyone, thank you for your participation. Um, have a great night. And um, for those of you who wish to join us at seven uh, for a regularly scheduled council meeting, we will see you later on. Thank you.